imagine the fall like my ex. I wake up in different places, different cars get different sex. Really don't play about this shit no more. Fuck what they doing, we ain't losing. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, what's going on, y'all? This is Marcus Rosa, a.k.a. Mazuma TV, back at y'all with some more boxing talk, man. Shout out to everybody, every single one of y'all that's in the building right now. You know what I mean? We definitely live. We definitely getting shit popping, man. Shout out to Mizuma Nation. Shout out to the mob. We in the building. As always, man, on the road to 2K, we about to hit that 1900 mark in due time. Shout out to the nation and the mob for making this possible. Hope y'all had a great week, man. So let's get into the people that's already in the comments because we already got some people in the building. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to my boy Tito, Lorenzo, Stop Motion, Ghost, what up, what up? Hit the like button as soon as y'all come in, man. We got we got three likes, man. Let's get it. Let's get it on up, man. Let's get it on up. You see what I mean? Lorenzo says, not boxing related, but for fellow wrestling fans, Cody finished his story. I'm assuming you're talking about Roman Reigns. I was just seeing that, you know, his streak lasted for like 1,300 days and some change. So, yeah, that's crazy. That's almost like when The Undertaker went undefeated in WrestleMania and they put a they ended up snapping that streak. You know what I mean? It gives me kind of those type of vibes. But, you know, shout out to Cody. Shout out to Cody Rhodes. I believe that's his name. Cody Rhodes for getting that motherfucking dub against Roman Reigns. I thought Roman Reigns was going to be able to pull it out. I ain't going to lie to you. You know what I mean? But, you know, that shit premeditated. That shit's already written. And I guess that's what the WWE felt like was best uh, to continue moving their company forward. Hopefully Roman Reigns gets back in the mix and he has like a little revenge story. He could get back where he is because i ain't gonna lie to you I, I i fuck with his personality you know what i mean i, I like i like the charisma I, I just fuck with how the way roman reigns give it up pause who did he you know what i'm saying so yeah and that shit going down in philly it's in philly right now you know what i mean i got a lot of homies that's over there you know what i mean enjoying the uh event you know what i mean i know people that was there for both days and you know um they really enjoying themselves you know what i mean i, I stopped watching wrestling a long time ago I just watched little clips here and there. My homie from my old co-worker, my former co-worker, was uh, trying to get me back into the mix of it, bro. But I just feel like I'm grown right now, man. And I'm on a totally different path, dog. I'm just so focused on boxing. And, you know what I mean? I don't really care for any other sport, in all honesty. You know what I mean? I leave some type of... Uh... What? Roman, Roman Reigns had leukemia? What? Really? Hold up. Really? He got leukemia. Oh, he says that it's still in remission, so that's a good thing. That's a good thing. You know what I mean? I, I have a chronic illness myself, and based off of my symptoms, I'm asymptomatic right now, so I'm assuming I'm in remission as well. You know what I mean? I don't have anything to the effect of leukemia, but... Uh, Shout out to Roman Reigns, man. For him to be able to psych, uh, balance both of those, that's even more impressive. I got a whole different respect for him. You know what I mean? That, that's crazy. I never knew that. That's how disconnected I guess I am with box, with uh, wrestling, but whatever. You know what I mean? Let, let's get back to the boxing talk, man. Shout out to Roman Reigns. That, that's, that's very impressive. You know what I mean? That, that's very impressive. But uh, let, let, let's let's talk. Let's chop it up, man. Let's let's get in tune with the people, man. Shout out to my boy Anonymous Miles Jordan in the building. What's up? What's up, homie? Texas 16 South in the building. Holy hands. What up? What up? 
He asked me a pretty good question. He said, what's good, fam? So if you had your way, what fights would you like to see this year? Top three? I think two of them is already being made. My brother, uh, Alexander Usyk versus Tyson Fury. I want to see an undisputed champion at heavyweight. I want to see that. Uh, shit. Let's go with uh, Arthur Betterby versus Dimitri Bivol. And you know, you know, I'm big on uh, Canelo Alvarez versus David Benavidez, but I doubt that it happened this year. In all honesty, I moved on from that situation, honestly. But uh, let's see what else. I would like to see. Shit, I was I was gonna say uh, I was gonna say Terence Crawford versus Sebastian Fundora, but look like Fundora uh, team don't really want to make that happen for him right now. I'm sure if Sebastian Fundora wouldn't mind taking on that challenge, but it seems like it's his team that's holding him back. I think Sebastian cut from that cloth where, you know what I mean, he willing to take the chance, you know what I mean? But I just think that he's listening to the advisors that he compensates, you know what I mean? And some people some people more man about their shit. Some people uh, take control of their career. And there's other people who, you know, just let the people that they pay control their career, you know what I mean? There's some people that control their own destiny, and there's other people that let people guide it them, uh, for them. And I just think that's the type of dude that Sebastian Fundora is based off of what's been uh, happening lately. You know what I mean? But shout out to my boy Lorenzo with the $5 super chat. He says, do you think her and China already make a Cruz versus Matias fight uh, could be detrimental to Matias in his fight with Paro? Um, That's a good question. Let me let me think about that a little bit. Do you think her and China already make a Cruz versus Matias fight could be detrimental to Matias? Well, I'm going to say this. I don't think that he's actually trying to make the fight right now. I think that he's uh, just speaking about the idea or the possibility of them fighting. You know what I mean? I never heard him speak out and say that he's about to sit down with Al Heyman or somebody from PBC or he's uh, looking to sit down with them ASAP. It just looks like he's uh, it looks like he's just, you know, looking into the future. You know what I mean? I, I think that he's just looking into the future and what possible fights could be suitable for Subaru Matias if he's successful against Leon Paro. But I do say this, with him speaking like that, um, I think that he's under the impression that Sue Brill would defeat Leon Paro. So if I'm Leon Paro, I will feel disrespected by that, in all honesty. You know what I mean? Like, why are you talking about Sue Brill facing uh, Isaac Cruz? You must be under the assumption that he's going to get past me. So hopefully Leon Paro uses that as motivation and he brings the best version of himself. And if he's able to get the upset, he'll have Eddie Hearn eating his words. You know what I mean? That's just me speaking from a fighter's perspective because I was one at one point in time. And, you know, there's people that's going to be underestimating. You know what I mean? I don't know if Liam Paro is signed with Matchroom, um, but if he is, um, I will feel genuinely disrespected by that. You know what I mean? It tells you a lot about what Eddie Hearns thinks about the possibility of, like, who will win that fight. You know what I mean? I think that he's under the assumption that Subrell will defeat uh, Leon Paro, because I don't think that would be something that he would say if he thought any different. If he felt like this would be a competitive 50 50 fight, I think he would have threw it out there that, uh, you know, that Leon Paro could, could, you know, be the guy. He could have said, oh, Mati he could have said Isaac Cruz versus the winner of Subriel and Leon Paro. He could have easily said that, you know what I mean, and give respect to both guys. But um, what he did instead was just mention Subriel specifically. So that just lets you know that. He believes Subro subconsciously he's letting you know that uh well indirectly, but like on his conscience, he genuinely believes that Subro would defeat Paro. That's just my personal opinion. You know what I mean? You just gotta pay attention to what people say and they'll let you know what's on their mind. You know what I mean? Uh all I all I know is all I know is I see why Hitchens didn't want to fight Matias. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Better be this versus Morel, but Bud versus Boots. I want to see a new gun against a top gun. Uh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bud versus Boots. But, you know, I, I chopped it up with Bomac and stuff like that. And, you know, it, it's just not something that's really on their mind right now. Like, I, I don't know how else to put it. And, you know, I'm at the point in time where it's like, yo, if they don't want to fight, let's just move on to the next one. Because there's plenty of great fights that could be made. I'm kind of upset that, uh, you know, Bud is taking this approach where he's not willing to give a guy an opportunity. When the entire course of his career, he was just looking for that one big opportunity and was highly upset that nobody was giving him his opportunity but now that he's gotten one and he's on top you know what i mean and he's uh you know enjoying the the fruits of his labor now he don't want to he the whole thing that he was bitching about his entire career he's not willing to do for somebody else so it, you know it, it is what it is man you know what i mean
Jerron Ennis is going to have to get it from the muscle, man. He's going to have to get it from the mud. One step at a time. And Jerron Ennis announced that he got something big. He got a big announcement coming soon. So I'm assuming that he's going to be fighting on the Jerron, uh, on the Javante Davis undercard. That's what I believe. You know what I mean? That's what I think. So I wouldn't be surprised if Javante Davis or Frank Martin announced it, which they still haven't. You know what I mean? There's been some rumors and speculation as to um, when the fight will be and where it's going to be. But I haven't seen Premier Boxing champions, you know, post anything yet. So until they don't po until they post something, then it's not really, you know, signed, sealed and delivered, in my opinion. You know what I mean? I got to hear it from the source. If I don't hear it from the source, then, you know, it's up for debate for me. So that's just what it is. I want someone to ask her what he told Canelo's coach that pissed him off. What do you mean? Did he I think I think I do recall that situation. What what was that exactly? I think I remember that, but I, my mind is a little bit it's a little bit of it's a little hazy. Any champion at 140 stop chops hitchens? Okay, we can look at Tia Fimo. Tia Fimo might have a little trouble with hitchens because hitchens can move and box and stuff like that. And we know that Tia Fimo struggles cutting off the ring. But he may be able to be successful against Hitchens. You know, Isaac Cruz, that's a tough fight for Hitchens, bro. That's a real tough fight for Hitchens. Um, based off of what I just seen against Gustavo Lemos. And the more that I hear people talking about it, there's more people that are saying they believe Gustavo won. You know, Damian Lillard, man, I got to find a way to bring him on the channel, man, because he, you could tell that he's a hardcore boxing fan. You know what I mean? So I would love to chop it up with him and just really get to see on uh, where he at with it, like mentally with the boxing shit, you know, his boxing, his his, his analyst skills. I really want to chop it up with him, but uh, we, we'll figure it out. But um, he, he said that he had Gustavo, Gustavo Lemos winning 7-5. You know what I mean? So that's just what it is, man. I don't know. You know, Isaac Cruz might give Hitchens a fucking rough fight and may possibly beat him. You know what I mean? Um, Subaru Matias, bro. I, I, I'm uploading the video like right now, like as we speak. This shit, this shit is like responding slow as fuck. So my apologies for that, man. I had a pretty busy Sunday. I was supposed to chill, but you know, I'm never, I never stop working for real, bro. You know what I mean? I'm always keeping myself busy. So, yeah, you know I mean, I wasn't able to upload it like at a good time, but I, I put out a video already. I put out a video already, man. Go check it out. I'm talking about Turkey Atlas Sheik to make possibly, possibly, this is a rumor. Um, Turkey Atlas Sheik to make USA debut with Terrence Crawford, man. You know what I mean? So uh, go check out that video that I posted, man. It's a really good topic. And if this is able to happen, if Turkey Atlas Sheik is able to uh, bring, you know, his business, the big fights that he's been making in Saudi Arabia, is he, if he's able to bring it over to the U.S., Yo, listen, the boxing world is going to change before we know. A lot of moves are going to happen. And um, I think that Turkey al is going to be uh, a big, relevant name in the sport of boxing, bro. Because when you have that that much money, when you have that much money that you're, like, you know, capable of obtaining and, you know, giving out, you can make a lot of shit happen, bro. You know, because a, a lot of the issues with boxing and fights not being made is because you know, there's so many hands in the pot and, you know, people feel like they're not getting what they really worth and, you know, high risk, low reward. If Turkey al Sheik puts that motherfucking bag out there, then it, it, it's not it, that that shit automatically gets eliminated. That that low reward shit gets eliminated. So it's only going to be so many places people can run. You know what I'm saying? Um, Them Saudis definitely going to run boxing. But what surprised me more than anything was I thought that Turkey al Sheik was going to stay his ass in Saudi Arabia. You know what I mean? I thought that the whole intention behind him bringing big boxing fights to Saudi Arabia was to get more people to travel over there and experience the country, you know, tourism, you know what I mean? Bring, you know, from an economic standpoint, just bring a lot of money and relevance to the country, you know what I mean? Because, you know, I feel like there's a bad stigma on Saudi Arabia and stuff like that, and it discourages a lot of people to go. But if they see a lot of big events, you know, happening over there, then it'll motivate them most likely to stop by and check out and see what the life is like over there. You know what I mean? Shout out to my boy Ray Davis in the building. What up, Ralph? What up? What up? Soaked. What's up? What's up? Um, yeah, man. So I, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, if Turkey Al Sheik actually does this. Like, if he comes over to the U.S., 
it lets you know that for one, it's not strictly for Saudi Arabia and the benefit of them, but because he's genuinely interested in boxing and is actually, you know, willing to invest his funds in the boxing. You know what I mean? So I, I would love to see that. Turkey al says that he's a fan, like a genuine fan of the sport. I heard other fighters say that they was impressed by how much he knew about boxing. So let, let's see it happen, bro. If he's able to come over here and make his U.S. debut and that he gets Terrence Crawford on against, I believe his name is like Israel uh, Madrimov, I believe. If he's able to get that fight for Terrence Crawford, because, you know, let's keep it a buck, man. The WBO, they trying, you know what I mean? The sanction of body really trying to back butt. But th to keep it honest with you, man, I think that Sebastian Fandura's team are absolutely petrified of the idea of facing Terrence Crawford. And with that being known, they're going to do anything they can, which they've already done in terms of doing that six-month suspension in order to stay away from Terrence Crawford. We still have not heard all of the details that are involved with this man having a six-month suspension. You know what I mean? If you got a fractured nose, broken nose, whatever it is, I've seen people who have had fractured and broken noses be able to bounce back before six months. You know what I mean? I I've actually seen people suspended for less time for a fractured and broken nose. Personally, me personally, I've seen people with broken orbital bones be cleared by, by athletic commissions before six months. What the fuck is going on with Sebastian Fundora where he needs to be away from the sport for six months? This is my this is my like like experience, bro. This is my experience with dealing with like the pros. You know what I mean? I know how the state athletic commissions work. However, I've never participated or, you know, done any business with the Nevada State Athletic Commission. So they might have some different rules. I don't know. I know Floyd used to break his hands like every fucking fight. And I don't ever recall him being on six month suspension. So I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know. You know what I mean? But what I'm trying to say is WBO, they trying. But, you know, Sebastian Fandora and them, they trying to hold on to the belts for as long as they can. They not trying to line their fighter up, you know what I mean, for that type of ass whooping, you know what I mean, for that type of lesson. They seen what he did to Earl. They don't want no problems with that. So what they going to do, they going to stall him out. So Terrence Carver's not about to sit here six months and wait for a fight. He hasn't fought since July. So he's going to do whatever he can in order to get the best opportunity possible. Canelo don't want to fight him. You know what I mean? Canelo feels like he's not going to get anything out of beating him. You know, Sebastian Fandora don't want to fight him. Tim Zhu all cut and he don't got no titles uh, to, to uh, you know, deal with that. Jamel Charlo, Crawford already expressed not wanting to fight him because of his last performance. So, you know, Israel Madrimov, whatever his name is, my apologies, may be the best opponent for him right now. You know what I mean? It puts him in position to be a four-division world champion. And um, it easily, and if he has the Saudis backing him, how they claim these, according to these rumors, if the Saudis end up backing Terrence Crawford, then this is going to give him infinite options. You know what I mean? If the motherfuckers bring a bag, anybody will fight you. You know what I mean? Uh, at least I believe so. You know what I mean? So uh, let's see what happens with that, man. I would love to see if these rumors are true, how the way these uh, promoters over here are going to start acting. You know what I mean? Are they going to want to be involved with Turkey al Are they going to be discouraged from working with him? Like, like, what's going on? Let me see. I think Arthur Abraham came back with a broken jaw in like nine months after going to war with Edison Miranda. I remember that. If Haney wins, what direction should he go? And same question for Garcia. Well, if Haney wins, obviously his whole intention is to become undisputed. You know what I mean? If he becomes undisputed, I, I mean, you can't do that without facing the other champion. So, you know, Subrell... Just sign with Matchroom, so I'll be looking to try to make that fight immediately if that's what my intentions is. You know what I mean? I, I think that'll be the easiest fight to make if you're looking for a unification fight. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's one. Um, he could also, I mean, he was talking about going to 47. I don't know if that's still his thing, but, you know, he could probably steal that Mario Barrios fight from Jerron Ennis. You know what I mean? It seems like Jerron Ennis caught, caught up with that Cody Crawley mandatory. So he might be able to do that. Um, if he stays at 140, Subaru Matias is the best one. I mean, if you want to give Richardson Hitchens an opportunity, that's there too. You know, uh, Isaac Cruz, I don't know if if uh, BBC is going to really throw Isaac Cruz into a unification fight right away. It seems like they might have him do some defenses or whatever, you know, try to like, you know, build him up a little bit before they, before they uh, put him up against somebody like Devin Haney. Uh, Tiafimo Lopez is fighting some guy named Steve Claggett. So uh, that doesn't really seem like an option right now. So I think Subaru Matias is probably the best meaningful fight to make for 
Devin Haney next if he's successful. If it's Ryan Garcia, I mean, Ryan Garcia is going to hold that belt hostage, bro. He's not going to care about unification fights. He told you how he felt about belts in the past. He's only taking Devin Haney because it's the biggest money fight for him to make as of right now. He's not uh, – Javante Davis is not giving him a, a rematch. You know what I mean? Who else is Ryan Garcia going to make big bucks with? Uh, Soak said they're going to milk Cruz. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised if they keep his ass in California or Texas or something like that and just keep having a fight. You know what I mean? Where the Mexican people are at. They trying they, they trying to make that Mexican money. He got that country back in them. Mexico loves Isaac Cruz from what I heard and the Mexicans that I've spoken to. So, they, they yeah, they're going to try to keep that man on a winning streak. I don't think that putting him against Devin Haney right away is the best thing to do. So from a business aspect, man, PBC going to try to hold that belt as long as they can. You know, I think that they know that uh, Devin Haney is all wrong for Isaac Cruz. Stylistically, we've seen Javante Davis outboxing him. Javante Davis isn't a boxing first. He's not even a boxing first type of fighter. Like, it's in his arsenal, but it's not his go-to. That's Devin Haney's go-to. That's what he get into, hit and not get hit. You know what I'm saying? So I think they understand that, you know, that's a bad style matchup. So, you know, they're not going to really take that fight unless it's like an undeniable amount of money. That's what I think. You know what I mean? Um, he has to fight that Mando with Sandor. That's another thing. that I completely forgot about that. Thank you for keeping me with that. But um, Eddie Hearn, I seen that interview that Eddie Hearn did, and he was pretty much saying that, like, Devin Haney will have to vacate the title if he were to, you know, pursue bigger fights. And Devin Haney said, I'm not ducking shit. I'm not vacating. He said, I'm not vacating nothing. I'm with all the smoke. So, you know, unless he pays Sandor Martin some more step aside money like he did previously, because I think Eddie Hearn said that he paid Sandor Martin step aside money to take on Ryan Garcia. Unless he cuts him another check and, you know, Sandor Martin is cool with just taking this free money, then he's going to have to fight him next. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm assuming if Ryan Garcia wins, he'll have to face uh <laughs> Sandor Martin too. Imagine that shit. We would have never, I would have never thought we would see them two in the ring together. Sandor Martin versus Ryan Garcia. Oh man. I don't know, man. I think I think uh Ryan Garcia, if he were to win, man, he either gonna hold that belt hostage or he gonna end up getting stripped of that belt and he's gonna continue doing what he's doing. I don't see Ryan Garcia facing them type of dudes. Ryan Garcia is letting you know that he is he that he's all about the money. If it don't, he only fought Devin Haney at this point in time because Devin Haney's stock had rose to an all-time high after that Regis Pro Grade fight. You know what I mean? Vasil Lomachenko, uh, you know, becoming undisputed, defeating Vasil Lomachenko, then moving up and dominating Regis, bro. You know, a lot of people started talking about Devin Haney. Some of my most viewed videos that I make on my channel right now are about Devin Haney. So, you know, he he's very he's very, he's searched a lot. You know he's uh he's a he, he he's like a trend in the boxing world consistently. So I guess Ryan Garcia looked at the numbers and was like, "Yo, I think this is the I think this is like the biggest check that I could get right now. So why not?" You know, Ryan Garcia is not really in it for the legacy. He don't give a fuck about none of that. Because if that was the case, he'd been a he he if he was all about the legacy, then he would have fought Devin Haney back at 35 when he was his mandatory. Do y'all remember that? Ryan Garcia was Devin's mandatory and he ducked it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, he said, "Gotta love free money." Yeah, I mean, unless he, unless Devin Haney cuts him another check to take on another big fight, then you know, I guess Sandor Martin is gonna be next. Unless he wanted, unless he don't give a fuck about the belt, he, he. But he said that he ain't giving up shit. He trying to be undisputed, so you might have to see Sandor next, which isn't really like a stylistic, stylistically pleasing fight, but you know, it's gonna be a chess match for sure. You know what I mean? So, uh, yo, Ralph crazy as shit. He said, I swear I seen Claggett at an Apple store. He fixed my phone for me. Yeah, I had some water damage and shit. He told me to get a a, a new phone. I was like, fuck out of here, Steve. And I walked out with my phone and shit. Went over one of them, uh, one of them, uh, <laughs> them Indian stores and one of them tech niggas, they fixed my phone for me. You know what I'm saying? Fuck Steve Claggett. Can Africa outbox Matias? I mean, it's possible. But based off of what we seen, yes, I mean, anything's possible in the sport of boxing. Shout out to the 32 people that's in the building, man. Let's hit the like button, man. Let's get the likes up. I think I only see 18 likes. Nah, we got to get that up. We need at least 30. Let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. Let's get it popping. Let's get it popping. Oh, somebody dislike. Oh, y'all petty. Oh, y'all petty. Y'all petty. Okay. 
Nah, but um, no, nah, all jokes aside, though, I mean, anything is possible in the sport of boxing. You know what I mean? It might be a situation where Africa may raise to the occasion. But if we thinking about like just based off of what we've seen and just keeping it a thousand, bro, I've seen that this man was struggling with Gustavo, man. It looked like he had gotten hurt by Gustavo um, a couple times from what I've observed. It was a lot of excessive holding, you know what I mean, with no real work on the inside. You know what I mean? It just seemed like Hitchens was completely overwhelmed, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? It just seemed like he was overwhelmed. I think that's just the best way to put it, because if he would have stayed calm, stayed relaxed, I think that he could have found a lot of offensive opportunities and, and really, you know, ran uh, Gustavo into some shots. I seen Gustavo completely come like leaping with hooks and shit like that. You know, uh, I, I, I think it could have went either way, man. You know what I mean? I think it was that controversial of a fight. I think it was that close of a fight. It could have went seven five either way. That's what I think. You know what I mean? I heard I heard people that I respect in the boxing world say that they thought Gustavo edged it out seven five. I heard other people say that Hitchens barely did enough to get the victory. So it all depends on you know how you uh, score fights and what you're looking for, what your criteria is. You know what I mean? I thought one seventeen one eleven was ridiculous if we keep it at a thousand. Because all that's saying is uh, that that scorecard right there is literally saying that Gustavo only got three rounds. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, man. You know, based off of what I'm saying and how uncomfortable he was against pressure fighters and how discouraged he looked when he got hit with big shots, it don't look too good against Matias, man. It don't look against it don't look good against Matias. Um, I think Matias is on a totally different level from Gustavo. I think he lets his hands go a lot more. I think his pressure is a lot more uh, crazier than Gustavo's. I've seen Gustavo take a couple rounds off. You know what I mean? I've seen him. Uh, Tim Cheatham. I know exactly who Tim Cheatham is. Spock, I've been hearing about him for a while. He's been on bullshit, bro. He's been on bullshit. But I appreciate you informing me on who he is. But I've been to about him. You know what I mean? But, um, well, shit, what I was saying was, what I was saying was uh, Matias' pressure is a lot crazier. I don't think Gustavo is on Subrail's Matias level at all. You know what I mean? Subrail is a totally different monster. So if you're struggling with that level of opposition, it's not going to look good, man. I told you guys. I told you guys, yo, that uh, uh, fucking that. Damn, what the fuck was I about to say, bro? I'm reading the comments and I'm getting distracted at the same time. Like I'm trying to think and then I'm reading the comments at the same time. What I was saying was, I was saying something along the lines of, oh, yeah, if uh, Richardson Hitchens were to fight Sue Burrell, it would look a lot like Sue Burrell versus Malik Hawkins. I'm telling you this. I understand that Richardson Hitchens beat Malik Hawkins. Okay, cool. But stylistically, from a stylistic standpoint, how the way Malik was successful starting off boxing at first, being flashy, turning Matias, but then Matias uh, continued to put pressure on him, landed some big body shots was chopping away at his body. You know what I mean? His legs went, then he fought a flat-footed fight, and then Subrell punished him after the fact. I could really see that happening. I think that that's exactly how that happened. Richardson Hitchens might provide a little bit more resistance because he's a couple notches above Malik Hawkins, but I think the same thing will transpire, bro. Um, that's just my personal opinion. You know what I mean? Maybe Hitchens could prove me wrong. I've been proven wrong before. I'm not a sidekick. You know what I mean? But... I think that it's the same fight. I think it's the same stylistic matchup, and I think that Matias will stop Richardson Hitchens. You know what I'm saying? Ray Davis said, I called it live on the ATP. Hitchens was going to struggle, and I had Lamos upset victory, 115-113. He doesn't know how to move laterally. He only boxes off the back foot. Yeah, and, and like, you know, this is the thing, right? This is This is what I tell people that's in boxing, right? I tell my fighters, only clinch, only clinch when you have no other solutions. You know what I mean? Because, you know, clinching doesn't result in you piling up points and hopes to get the victory. You know what I mean? Like, we see Mayweather clinch up Manny Pacquiao, but it was really to disturb his offense. And then once they got the split, Mayweather was back on his offense, dictating the pace. But whenever Manny Pacquiao got a little bit out of pocket, he was getting a little reckless. You know what I mean? Floyd to tie up. Just seemed like Richardson Hitchens didn't really have no solutions other than to tie up. You know what I mean? When he was outside, Hitchens was jabbing, you know, throwing some straight shots here and there. But for the most part, whenever Gustavo was having these moments, you know, there was several times where, like, Hitchens could have fainted him. You know what I mean? Beat him to the punch, catch a shot. You know what I mean? There was a lot of things that he could have did, but he 
what he was limited to and what you know his mind just resorted to was just tying him up, tying him up, tying him up. And I told you guys that really that uh Roly Romero kind of exposed Richardson Hitchens and um him being extremely uncomfortable against strong, big punching pressure fighters. You know what I mean? Roly Romero is a big, strong dude, and uh he lets his hands go and he got a lot, he got a lot of pop behind his punches. And I told you guys, um, I haven't really seen him fight anybody that who fights like that style wise. And then I watched Gustavo and I was like, okay, Gustavo might be able to give you some trouble. I didn't say it on the live, but I was just watching some film a little bit before the fight happened. And I was like, okay, Gustavo's tough. You know what I mean? I seen that he was tough. He had a good record. You know what I'm saying? Um, but the fact that you are that uncomfortable under pressure, um, you're going to, you're going to be extremely uncomfortable facing somebody like Subriel. You know what I mean? And that's just my opinion. You know what I mean? And Richardson Hitchens just, just continues to go on with this IBF shit. Like, first of all, you burning a bridge with a with a with a world sanctioning body. I hope you understand that because you've been throwing a lot of shade towards the IBF and you not agreeing with the rehydration rules. Um, you're doing yourself a disservice by doing this because there could be an opportunity um, there for you to possibly fight for the IBF, but then you know they might not put you in position because of all the shit that you had to say. You know what I mean? So you literally burning a bridge without you even noticing it. So Let's go on X. You know what I mean? Let's go on uh, on Twitter, I guess. Um, yo, by the way, Javante Davis is fucking shredded, bro. That's like the first time I've seen his abs look that defined. Yeah, he definitely locked in, bro. Tank on a different mode right now. Yeah, he respected the shit out of Frank Martin. You could tell. Yeah, for sure. Uh shout out to uh shout out to Javante Davis. That boy in stupid shape for sure. They were talking about he put on muscle. He don't look like he put on muscle. He looked like he put on some definition. You know what I mean? It looked like he cut some fat off. That's all that looked like. So uh, let's get back to Richardson Hitchens and uh, the IBF situation. You know what I mean? Because like I said, all he really doing in reality is hurting his chances for, you know, fighting for a legitimate world title. You know what I mean? And he's talking as if he's a fucking world champion or he's done anything, bro. Like, it's it's crazy. Yeah, no Diddy for sure. No Diddy for sure. Yeah, he definitely look like he in top shape, bro. He taking Frank Martin extremely serious. Uh, shout out to the 41 people that's in the building, man. Hit the like button, man, if you appreciate the content. But I'm telling you right now, that dude is on a different level right now. Javante Davis, I've never seen him look that small and, and just you know, cut up. Because usually when he sit on the scale, you don't really see his abs all like that. It might be because of a lot of the tattoos that he has and shit like that. But um, just seeing him after that workout right there, um, his he, he he's he's in shape. It looked like he on weight already, honestly. Um, he looked like he's like 140 on the dot right now. So hopefully he don't overtrain. We don't really want to see that. But um, so far, so good. So far, so good. He got a lot of time between that, that shit too. He still got the rest of April, all of May. And the majority of June, because from what I heard, they fight in June 22nd. You know what I mean? Let's see. Let's see what Richardson Hitchens says. So he says, if y'all think Lamos won, we could run that shit back again in New York City in September. I'm with all that and no IBF rules this time. I beat this dude clearly and I'll do it again to show y'all what's up. So he just throw. So the IBF just catches a stray just because, you know, he has a controversial fight. You know what I mean? I don't really make any sense at all. But this is what the people are not telling you. You know what I mean? If somebody by the name of HLD responded to it, and this is what I told you the last time I was on live and I was talking about Richardson Hitchens. I said that the IBF has a 10-pound rehydration limit. You know what I mean? But that weigh-in is literally at like 8 in the fucking morning. You know what I'm saying? So all you got to do is just put on 10, yo, just put on a solid 9 to 10 pounds and just fall back for the rest of the night, right? You weigh in at like 7, 8 in the morning. Then you have until 8 in the morning all the way to the night of the fight. If you're the main event, you're probably not going to fight till 11, 10, 30, 11 o'clock, bro. So all you really got to do is just hold that weight for a little bit. Hold that 9 to 10 pounds, which you should be able to do. Because you say you walk around at one. You said your fight weight is 154. So if you go from 140 to 150, you'll feel significantly better. And then from 8 in the morning until 11 o'clock at night, assuming that you're the main event, you can put on that additional four pounds, bro. It don't make any sense, bro. This, this this whole shit that you, this whole route that you're taking with, acting like you have such a problem with the rehydration process with the IBF, bro, I'm calling bullshit, bro. I'm calling bullshit. You know what I mean? Um, they provided a document right here. 
it says the IBF 10 pound rehydration is only till the next morning. Then you can rehydrate as much as you want till the fight. This is something that I've been telling y'all, bro. I remember when Daniel Jacobs had that 10 pound limit, he violated against Triple G. They had a weigh in at like eight in the morning. I believe their fight was in New York. Where did Daniel Jacobs and Triple G fight at, bro? That was at Madison Square Garden, bro. That was in New York. I'm calling bullshit, bro. I don't believe that you don't want to fight for the IBF because of the rehydration jump. I don't believe it, bro. If you say your fight weight is 154, if you only putting on 14 pounds, put on that 10 pounds. That night, after you weigh in, chill. You could put on 10 pounds and just relax, bro. Just eat, just rehydrate and just continuously check your weight. Check your weight. Check your weight. You know what I mean? Once you hit like 139, just relax. You know what I mean? Just relax. Wake up the next morning. Weigh in. You won't violate the, the rehydration process. Then you have all that time, literally 12 hours and some change, 15, 14, 15 hours to rehydrate. Why is that so hard? You can, you can get a fucking, I mean, if the, if the commission will allow you, you can get you a little vitamin IV. And put the nutrition, put the vitamins and minerals back in your system. You'll feel great. You'll probably be more than 154 at the end of the day. What the fuck is the problem? When did Triple G fight Jacobs? They fought a while ago. This was like 2017, I believe. Who the fuck is the IBF? Who the fuck is the IBF anyway? What you mean? They they uh, they're one of the most of they're one of the four major world titles. What are you talking about? The IBF is a very important boat, and I think it's the only sanctioning body that's ran by black people. So yeah, I rock with the IBF. It's, it, but the thing is, it's, it's not that difficult, bro. You only rehydrate 14 pounds. They're allowing you to put 10 on. What's the problem? Big, yo, there's big dudes that never complain. Earl Spence literally says he walks around at 175 to 180, and his first world title was what? The IBF, right? Did he ever complain about that 10 pound? I never heard him complain about that 10 pound, John. Never. Never. This is a big dude. He's a big welterweight, a lot bigger than Richardson Hitches. Never heard him have a problem with it. Jerron Ennis is a big dude. He hasn't fought. He hasn't defended his IBF yet. But, you know, I'm sure that because he fought for the IBF interim, he had to follow the same set of rules. Never heard him complain about it. Why are you the only motherfucker that's complaining about it? He says, I know who they are, but why do they even exist? Should only be one belt. Sorry, I'm from the MMA world. No, it's all right. It's all right. It's, it's cool for you to ask questions. Um, But, you know, unfortunately, you know how, like, the UFC set up, they only got two belts. They got the interim and the world title. Boxing's totally set up different, man. You know what I mean? They're trying to keep, creep the IBO up in there, you know, try to count the ring magazine. But for the most part, in order for you to become the man in the division, you have to obtain all four belts because until uh, – until you don't, until you obtain the four belts, everybody that's a champion in the division has a say so and calling themselves the best. Tia Fimo has a has a case for saying that he's the best. Devin Haney has a case. Zubrell has a case. Isaac Cruz now has a case. The only way that we could really find out is if they eliminate each other. So in order for you to be undisputed, you need the IBF, the WBO, the WBA, and the WBC. You see what I mean? Wasn't the WBC the OG? I don't know if they've been the OG. I know that they're the most popular one because, you know, because of the history and stuff like that. But um, I don't even know. I would have to see when the IBF originated. You know what I mean? Let, let, let's, let's, do, let's do some Googles. Let's do some Googles. Because I know for a long time the WBO wasn't really accepted by people, you know what I mean, until a little bit later on. Let's check it out. So, of course, the IBF was founded in 1983. The WBO was uh, created in 1988, so five years after the IBF. The WBA, 
uh, was created in 1962. Let's see, where did WBC at? WBC not showing they joined. So the oldest one so far seems to be the WBA. Let's see when the WBC was created. Two, wait, hold up. That's not it. Nineteen sixty-three. So the WBC was founded in nineteen sixty-three. So based off of this right here, the WBA is the oldest sanctioning body, according to the Google's right here. Okay, so the WBA is a year older than the WBC. Wait, hold up. Wait, this one right, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm seeing all these different numbers. But based off of what I just seen on Google, that's what it told me. You know what I mean? The difference between MMA and boxing is the promotions have titles instead of sanctioning bodies. How boxing is. You will have a pride welterweight champ and a UFC welterweight champ. Yeah. It's a fact. Good point, but yeah, man. I, I man, long story short, I'm not believing anything Richardson Hitchens says for real, bro. I don't believe that he doesn't want to fight for the IBF because of the rehydration process. I don't. There's people that put on more weight than you that have never complained. Why the fuck are you bitching? I don't understand it, bro. Yeah, I mean, Devin Haney, who struggled to make 135, that looked dead on the scale, bro. Looked super dead on the scale. The man. Looked like he had trouble, you know, walking at that point. You know, when he fought Vasil Lomachenko, y'all peep, they never showed him way in, right? The man was all hooded up, you know what I mean? They didn't let they didn't allow nobody to go in the rooms or anything like that. That lets you know how bad of a weight cut it was for Devin Haney. He did not want anybody to see how he looked when he weighed in against Vasil Lomachenko. And he still followed the IBF orders. So if he could do that, why can't you? Make it make sense, bro. Don't just keep it a buck. You don't want to fight Super El Matias, bro. Your heart pump Kool-Aid, my nigga. It's cool. Like, there's no other way to really put it. You talk so greasy. You talk so fucking greasy, bro. But you struggled, you struggled against a relatively unknown person. He had a solid record. So that don't mean he ass. Unknown don't mean ass. But as much as you talking, you talk crazy about Devin Haney. You say you want the winner of Super L and Leah Paro, but then you say shit about the IBF. And you talk, you, you talk so arrogant as if like you you really that dude, but you laying an egg against Gustavo. If you that nigga, how you claim you is, Gustavo shouldn't have been a problem. I know Devin wouldn't have struggled with it or Super L or any of them dudes. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I ain't buying it. I didn't buy nothing that he's talking about. And then, uh, let's, let's talk about Edgar Berlanga, that is, right? Edgar Berlanga. Because he, he, he had another cornball. I don't know, bro, I'm not going to blame it on Brooklyn, bro. I'm not. My father from Brooklyn, I got some cool people that I fuck with from Brooklyn. Note, you know, re and shit like that. But let, let, let's just talk about this shit, bro. Because these motherfuckers making Brooklyn look bad. So Edgar Berlanga, you know, I never heard this man mention Diego Pacheco name ever, 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 right? Because Edgar Berlanga's whole mission right now is to fight Canelo Alvarez, right? He's been calling for that fight, Mexico versus Puerto Rico. Oh, I'm a star. He's a star, bro. You're not a fucking star. Have you ever fought on pay-per-view? Like, what, like, what, 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 what are you selling out, bro? Like, let me know how much you making. Who have you fought? You know what I mean? Because part of being a star is, the, is is eliminating top opposition. You know, Canelo did it. You know, Devin did it. You know, Tank did it. What you doing? You ain't doing none of that. You not on their level, right? So let, let's get that out the way. So, you know, he was talking about how since, you know, he had just beat up. He, he, he just beat up this, this fucking UK level guy, I believe. I forgot what his name was. Let me get his name right so I don't, uh, you know what I mean? I ain't trying to disrespect nobody. You never know who watching. You know what I'm saying? So let me come up with the dude name. He you know he stopped Patrick, pa Patrick McCrory, right? He stopped the 18-0, stopped him in the sixth round, right? Cool. 
So I remember that after the fight, he was saying he was the he was the mandatory for Canelo Alvarez, the mandatory for Canelo Alvarez. He got to fight me. And I ain't going to lie. He had me good. He tricked me good. I was like, ah, shit, man. I guess Canelo going to have to fight him because he the mandatory, right? Wrong. Wrong. I don't think Canelo has mandatories. I think he's a WBA super champion. If I'm, if, if I'm mistaken, please let me know. But as far as I'm concerned, the WBA regular champion is David Morrell. So based off of that logic, you are not the mandatory for Canelo Alvarez. You are the mandatory for David Morrell. That's right. I don't know what made him think that. I don't know who told him that. Did he come up with this on his own? I don't know what the hell he's talking about. But ever since they the WBA came out and said, you're actually the mandatory for David Morrell, Edgar Berlanga has been very quiet. Very quiet. You know why? I know why. Do y'all know why? Leave some comments below. You let me know why he's been quiet about being David Morrell mandatory. Let me know. So you don't say, yo, listen, Morel was steamrolled Edgar Berlanga badly, badly. That'll be a bad job, bro. I'm telling you that. And then you all come out. The reason why I'm bringing up Edgar Berlanga is because I seen the little tweet that he had put up talking about Pacheco is ass, right? Now, Pacheco went in there with a guy who was undefeated as far as far as I know. Let me let me do my Googles. I don't want to I don't want to say something that ain't true. You know what I mean? I did watch the fight, though. You know what I'm saying? I did watch it. He went up against a guy who was 15-0, Sean McCallman, right? Now, this dude was an extremely tough dude, and I told you guys on the live that he was solid based off of some of the guys that he has beat. He's defeated Money Powell, and he's defeated Von Alexander. Now, I know both of these dudes because I had a pro that was about to fight Von Alexander, and I was studying the dude, and I was like, yo, this dude ain't no fucking joke. Money Powell, I remember him right before he made his pro debut. He was on Dante's Boxing Nation, and you know, he had he, he was doing he was he had some devastating knockouts in the amateurs and sparring sessions. They was building him up crazy. I remember he was doing interviews on boxing ego. Like, I remember about I remember Money Powell. Money Powell is a problem. So if you're able to defeat both of those guys, that speaks volumes about you. Not only that, based off of what I've seen, the dude made it an ugly fight. The dude had a long ass reach, and Diego Pacheco is accustomed to being a taller fighter. Diego Pacheco is like six four. The dude is six foot. But as far as I'm concerned, I remember his reach being significantly longer. Pause. Than Diego Pacheco's. So that's that's an obstacle that he had to overcome. Was it uh, the best performance? No. But I thought that the score was correct. You know what I'm saying? I I thought I thought 96 94 was a good job. That's what I thought. That's still a win at the end of the day. You know what I mean? The fact that this is what people got to understand too. The pros, for the most part, usually have fights in their career that's a lot tougher than others. You know what I mean? And people might be feeling like they're exposed, right? You can name a pro and they had a tough fight, uh, you know, early on in their career. You feel me? Uh, I remember when uh, fucking Ryan Garcia, I believe the dude's name was like Jason Velez or something like that. He had a real tough outing with him. A lot of people don't talk about that. I remember Regis and all of them was talking about how Devin Haney had a tough fight in Mexico and they switched his record around. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's true, but, you know, that's what they were saying. Um, I remember, I remember Boots had a tough fight at the Sugar House. He ended up stopping dude, but the dude was tough. You know what I mean? No, there was actually one dude that went the distance with Boots. He body slammed Boots and all. He made it a real ugly fight. And it, it was, it was ugly. It was ugly, but the dude didn't get stopped or anything like that. It was early in his career. Uh, Jason Velez was Puerto Rican. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, ugly wins are part of the game. Perfectly said. You know what I mean? So you're not going to look impressive every time. There's some styles that's harder to overcome than others. That's just the reality of the situation. It's not like Pacheco had a, had a gift or anything like that. You know what I mean? But Edgar Belonga, you got a whole lot of shit to talk for talking about somebody's ass, bro. You you got you got put down. Then, then you get put down in the amateurs. You got, bro, you was getting knocked out in the amateurs. You were getting, uh, 
you were getting stopped and in, in, in sparring with somebody who was two weight classes below you. Erickson Lubin was stopping you. And you talking about niggas' ass? Bro, you you <laughs> you had a whole guy in front of you that I mean you've gotten so frustrated in fights that you bit niggas. You bit you've bitten people because you wasn't getting it your way in the ring. And you talking about people ass. You know what I'm saying? I who who was it that he bit? Was it uh Angulo? I think he bit Angulo. And then as soon as you stepped up slightly in competition, Berlanga was getting stopped in the amateurs. Yes, he was. He was getting dropped, stopped, all types of shit. He got stopped by Erickson Lubin in sparring. That's something that you can find online right now. I don't give a fuck if he reeking boxer film. I'm gonna keep it a thousand. You know what I mean? And we different types of Regans. If you know, you know. We ain't the same type Regans. But, uh, you know, as soon as you stepped up slightly in competition, you can't stop nobody. You know what I'm saying? You fought Romo Alexis Angulo, somebody that David Benavidez punished and, you know, treated him like he was his stepson, stepchild or some shit. You went to war with him. I had a really tough fight. And there's some people out here that believe that Romer Alexis Angulo defeated Edgar Belanga. You know what I mean? I remember uh who who uh damn, who was that dude that dropped? Uh was it Marcelo? Who was it that that uh who was it that dropped Edgar Belanga? I think it was I think it was Marcelo Cosares, whatever his name is. Put you on your ass. Yeah, Berlanga down in round nine. Yeah, you talk about niggas' ass, bro. You over here again. Wash by dudes we don't even know. You know what I'm saying? I remember he hit the glove. He hit the grunt. He hit the canvas and he was hitting his gloves together. Like, bro, you're a clown, bro. You're a clown. Now the dude that you got dropped by is 32 and 7 and has gotten stopped three times. And that same dude that dropped you, guess what? Ironically, you're saying Edgar Belanga is ass, but the dude who put you on the canvas, Diego Pacheco, knocked out. Isn't that so, like, ironic? <laughs> it's like you can't make this up, yeah? Like, you can't make this up. You talking shit about the dude that you – that you talking shit about the dude that stopped the dude that put you on your ass. Plant would beat Berlanga every day of the week. Oh, yeah, he would embarrass Berlanga. He would embarrass him. They know that. That. I never. That's why Caleb Plant. He he wouldn't. He know. He don't even entertain that. He talking about Jamal Charlo. He don't give a fuck about no Edgar Belanga. They already know that he protected. They know there ain't no point in calling him out. That shit not going to happen, bro. But he was on top rank. He was under that protection program. You know what I mean? They were selecting his opponents real carefully. Then at one point in time, they, he felt like that he was too big of a star to be getting paid. Those little small paychecks. Although you have done nothing. You have done nothing in boxing. You know what I'm saying? You have done absolutely nothing. You haven't beat no top quality guys. You have not won a world title. You've literally done nothing. There's people all around you that's accomplishing a lot. You know what I mean? That's still with top rank. And somehow you feel like, you know, you, you bring too much to the table and, and, and top rank not giving you enough. So they let you go. Now you would now you would uh match room because you think you was about to get this Canelo fight, and all you end up getting was a mandatory uh slot for David Morrell. And now you quiet as shit, you know. You went over to match room. You, <laughs> Canelo Alvarez signed with PBC immediately afterwards. Ain't that some shit? Will he sell out? Will he sell out the small room in Madison Square? Yo, Edgar Belanga. Listen, man. Oh my god. Let's look at this, man. Edgar Belanga, bro. It's a, it's a. He sell tickets, right? In New York. But if he's this star, I mean, he fought he fought McCrory in, in uh, Orlando, Florida. What he sell over there? 
What he sell over there? Somebody let me know. If he just started, why they just keep him in New York? If you a star, you could be able to sell anywhere, like Javante Davis. Javante Davis will fight in Atlanta. Then he he'll fight in his hometown. Then he'll fight in Vegas. Then he bro, he could go literally anywhere. They saying the Frank Martin fight is gonna be in Houston. When you a star, you could literally fight anywhere, and the people are gonna come to you. Is Edgar Belanga capable of doing shit like that? Boxer film says he has a lot of Puerto Rican fans. That's not what I heard. That's not what I heard. I know a lot of media outlets in Puerto Rico. I know people that had, I know Puerto Ricans that run media outlets and they say how the island don't really fuck with Edgar Berlanga like that. You know what I'm saying? That's that's just me. I, I don't know what anybody else, I, I'm going to have to go out there. I'm going to be in Puerto Rico the end of this month. So, you know, when I go over there, I'm going to ask people what they think about Edgar. But from what I've heard from several media outlets from Puerto Rico, they don't really take too kindly to Edgar Berlanga. That's just what I heard. Yeah, that, yo, Lorenzo, that's exactly what I was saying, bro. It, it's different type of Regans out here. You know what I mean? It's different type Regans. And that, I'm going to just keep it like that. You know what I mean? He ain't no, he don't come from the same bloodline as me. I know that. He shouldn't even be saying nigga for real, for real. Why I don't like Edgar? It's not necessarily that I don't like him. It's just like, I think he gets a lot of credit for accomplishing nothing. You know what I mean? Like what 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 this dude he 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 comes onto the scene and you should have that type of confidence. You know what I mean? You you should carry yourself in that way, but you know, it's a level of arrogance to him where he feels like he's above certain shit. You have literally fought nobody. You you've done nothing for the sport of boxing, bro, to keep it honest with you. You was known for that first round knockout shit, but you know, um you, you ever since you stepped up in opposition, man, you've been struggling. You know what I'm saying? You you've been struggling. You ain't been you ain't been living up to the expectation, bro. Um, you 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 you. <laughs> I remember Jesse Hart was calling you out consistently. He's from Philly. Nah, he ain't nigga Regan J Cash. That's what I'm trying to say. But you know, I ain't trying to say too much on here. Yeah, you know I mean, he not. He definitely got that Spaniard blood in him. It's cool. All Puerto Ricans do, but you know, you know, Edgar Belang can't do this shit with his hair. That's all I know. I you know mean, he ain't got no dark people in his family. Yeah, you know I mean, put an ancestry test on that boy. That shit gonna be all out in Spain. You know them different Jones. Got a lot of colonizer blood in him. Yeah, he definitely a hype job, bro. He definitely a hype job. He's done. He he hasn't done anything. And he they 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 big him up as if he's this huge star, bro. He's a nobody. That's just me personally. He's well known. You know, top rank did a good job and you know uh building him up to be this first round knockout machine and shit like that. But you know, once he stepped up just a little bit against Demond Nicholson, um, we got we got to really see who Edgar Belanga was. You know what I mean? I just think that he's been heavily protected. You know, he's a result of good matchmaking, good promotion, good management. You know, that's why I don't really like him. He played like he's this uh, star and that, he, you know, he he's the best. And he, bro, the fact that he feels that entitled to a Canelo Alvarez fight is insane to me, bro. What the fuck have you done? Yo, Canelo Alvarez is going out here and he's calling David Benavidez a nobody. And David Benavidez has accomplished a lot more than Edgar Belanga. So based off of that logic, what the fuck is Edgar Belanga? And David Benavidez is a nobody. He just beat two quality guys back to back. He literally, in the little bit of time, um, in the little bit of time that, you know, he's been relevant and been well-known in boxing, he's beaten, uh, what, three world champions? Darrell, Plant, Demetrius Andre, that's three. Um, what level of fighters has Edgar Belanga defeated? How many world champions has he beat? He said Berlanga got Christopher Columbus DNA. Ooh, we. Wow. <laughs> you got that colonizer blood in him for sure. Mm hmm. There's a lot I want to say on here, but you know, 
be monetized and shit, so we got to keep it at a minimum. He said, damn, you're right. He does have Spain in him. I see it in his blood and his skin tone. I mean, you know, um, my dad's side, heavy Africans, they they came over from Nigeria and stuff like that. Our, 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 uh, our DNA is traced back to the Bantu tribe. You know what I mean? So, you know, my mom, you know, she uh, she has African on her side as well, but she also has Spaniard. You know what I mean? So you could be a little bit on the lighter side and still have that African blood in you. You know what I mean? There's a lot of biracial uh, people out here, but you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, Edgar Berlanga ain't got nothing. Like, Edgar don't even got the, you know what I mean? He ain't got, he ain't got nothing about him. He ain't got no, man, let me not, let me chill out. Let me chill out. Yeah, that's a, that's a fact, Ghost. Yeah, it's three people that make up Puerto Rico: Africans, Spaniards, and Taino Indians. Right. So I don't know if you consider them Native American. I don't know what you call them, but those are three. Africans were brought over for slavery. Dainos were enslaved as well. Spaniards were the one who colonized, uh, took over Puerto Rico and had us speaking Spanish. You know what I mean? That's why Puerto Ricans speak Spanish today, because the Spaniards colonized um, the country. You know what I mean? Um, after slavery and all that shit happened, a lot of the black people, a lot of slaves stayed there. I know for a fact that my dad's side, years back, were slaves. And yeah, it's pretty dope. It was pretty dope to learn that, but sad at the same time. Yeah, so we on the same type shit, Lorenzo. But my mom got African in her side as well. It's just she looked like a white woman, bro. <laughs> this is the reality of the situation. Yeah, you know I man. But yeah, I ain't trying to give out no history lessons or nothing like that. But yeah, he he ain't got that. He ain't got that in him, is what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? He ain't got it. He got that Spaniard blood in him, that Christopher Columbus, all that shit. Mm hmm. That boy got measles. He got measles, smallpox, and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Hold up. We all slave origins. My family is Sicilian. Ah. He said he ain't got an inside boxing game, no defense. That's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah, like Belanga got power, but you know, you could tell mentally, mentally he ain't he ain't there. You know what I mean? He gets frustrated real easily. Like Tiafimo. Tiafimo will start off a certain way. You know what I mean? He'll start off a certain way. And then when shit, when he meets a little resistance, he literally forgets everything. And you know, he resorts to doing, you know, bullshit. Edgar Belanga, the type nigga that, you know, shit ain't going his way, and he meet a little resistance, he bites you. You know what I mean? It turned into a fight with him. He, he, yeah, he be drawn. He forget he in a boxing ring. That's how frustrated he get. And that's the, the I don't know, he got a lot of bad qualities about him, for real, for real. <laughs> but God said, I'm Haitian, but I don't really fuck with, with hug chins. That's crazy. <laughs> you can call him hug chins. Yo. But yeah. Yeah, Edgar Belanga, a biter for real. I don't know. Mike Tyson from Brooklyn. You know, Berlanga from Brooklyn. They both bite niggas. My son Hitch is gonna get back. Uh, look at Ree. Look at Ree. His Brooklyn, his Brooklyn brother. I know he ain't gonna get back against Matias. I know that. He better spend that block against Gustavo and rematch him. 
He said, Hitchens better not activate his mandatory because he'll be hurt by Christmas. <laughs> I don't know why that shit's so funny. That's hilarious, though. Shout out to the 39 people that's in the building, man. Hit the like, man. Hit the like. We on here chopping it up. I just seen J. Cole uh, on stage apologizing to Kendrick. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So what I want to say right here tonight, I moved in a way that was... I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like, nigga, you know, shut I, up. Like, jab my nigga back, and I try to keep it friendly. But at the end of the day, when I listen to it, and when it comes out, and I see the talk, that shit don't sit right with my spirit. That shit make me feel. That shit disrupts my fucking peace. Oh so what my I say right god! Here, like, is in the midst of me doing that, and and in that shit, trying to find a little angle and downplay this this nigga's fucking. Uh, catalog and his greatness. Duh. I want to say right now tonight, how many people think Kendrick Lamar is one of the greatest motherfuckers that ever Man, uh, shut up, man. There's war out this bitch. Why is you trying to play friendly, man? Oh, my God, bro. He don't got no dog in him, bro. I hate that shit, bro. You, you did the right thing by replying to this motherfucker. Now you on stage talking about, oh, it didn't say right with my spirit. I ain't like that angle I took, man. Uh, he's one of the greatest of all. Bro, what the fuck is you doing, bro? Stand on your business, my nigga. You trying, you acting like you spent the block, nigga. Oh, God, bro. Now, Kendrick, respond, bro. What you going to do? You still going to play that love approach? You still going to play it cool? Jesus Christ, bro. It'd be hard to be a fucking cool fan with how the way he be moving sometimes, bro. I was just bitching about I was bitching about him on Instagram. How he ain't got no dog in him. He ain't respond to Kendrick. He made a response to Kendrick. That shit was all right. You know what I'm saying? It was a nice little, it was a nice little beginning. It was a nice little beginning. You know what I mean? It was like a like he said, it was a warning shot. That's definitely what it was. But if fucking Kendrick responds to this nigga. And you don't, you still gonna take the, cause you talking about, oh man, I feel bad. That's my brother. Oh, but if he swing back at you, you gonna stay hit? Man, fuck that, bro. Kendrick always throwing shots at niggas, then disappear, and don't nobody ever say shit to him. Like Kendrick, a little fucking bully, bro. Fuck all that. Jesus Christ. He a little bully. He like to talk shit and then disappear for another five years. No, fuck you, man. He, you don't hear Kendrick apologizing when he said "fuck the big three? Then he 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 referenced uh, your song "Stick" and he, bro, he was talking greasy. He throwing shots at you. He ain't apologized. You shot. You throw a shot back at back back at him, and now you feel bad for him, bro. You ain't got no dog in you, cuz. Man, I don't give a fuck, bro. Yo, if Cole really snapped and stopped being so fucking soft, I think he'd get right with Kendrick. Kendrick ain't, Kendrick ain't, they be acting like he on another dimension, bro. He ain't, nah, bro. That shit closer than you think. Cole really gifted like that, bro. He nasty. Fuck all that apologizing shit. Look, now, now he just fucked up, bro. He apologized to Kendrick, and now Kendrick about to be right at him. About to be right at him. Bro, Cole was never the weakest. Bro, you don't, you don't know what you're talking about, Ree. Stop talking, bro. Neither one of them niggas would tell you that. You tripping. Drake a better rapper than Cole? Get the fuck out of here. He make better. He, 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 he good for the hits and all that shit. Come on, man. Stop it. You don't listen. I could tell you don't listen to Cole by saying certain shit like that. You don't listen to him, bro. If you did, you wouldn't be saying nothing like that. But anyway, I ain't even about to get heated about that shit. This is what it is. Bro, that's not what we talking about. We talking about who the better rapper, not who make a better song. Because this song, they don't come down to how good a song is, as if you could rap or not. 
Yo, I completely forgot about the show. I didn't even speak about Clarissa Shields and Alicia Bumgarner. Yeah, Drake Drake might be the weakest if we talking about rapping. But it's cool. <laughs> he said, Canelo is a disgrace to boxing and he fears Benavidez. Oh, yeah, Jory, we know that, my brother. He said Clarissa was about to jump in the ring and coach Hitchens. Yeah, bro. I didn't really listen to the commentary, but I heard that I heard a lot of people complaining about uh Clarissa's commentary. You know what I'm saying? That's why you just need to bring me on there, man. Listen, yo, y'all, y'all see how I'm talking right now, bro. I swear to God, I changed I, I changed my whole slang up. I could speak intellectually, you know, I could bring out the big words, the SAT words, and all that shit, man. Bro, put me in a position to commentate for one of these networks, man, and I'm gonna show out. I'm going to show out. I promise you, I'll be in that motherfucker with a suit and all. You know what I'm saying? Like, let, like, come on, dog. Give give me a shot, man. Y'all be thinking because, bro, there's some fighters that's great commentators. Andre Ward, Lennox Lewis, it, it, George Foreman. I love George Foreman's commentary. Roy Jones. I like them dudes when they commentate, especially when they speaking, you know, just about goat shit because they goats. You feel what I'm saying? But not every fighter is good at breaking down or talking boxing analytically. You see what I mean? So, yeah, you know I mean, y'all putting y'all putting Clarissa Shields up there, and you know she she goaded. You know what I mean? She definitely got a case for being one of the greatest female fighters ever, but she don't talk that shit like I do. She don't talk. She don't talk that shit like I do. I promise you, she don't. She probably she probably put hands on me in the ring. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know if I'm in shape. I think I get Clarissa for real. For real. Think I'm too strong for, her. but that's a different conversation. <laughs> if she catch me right now, she got me. But if I'm in shape, oh yeah. But nah, uh, she don't talk that shit like me, and I'm gonna keep it a thousand. I don't, I don't think I don't think a lot of them can really talk that talk with me when it comes to boxing and, and breaking down fights and shit like that. Just give me a role. I don't need to be the play by play commentator, but you know. Give me be, let me be the unofficial scorecard, and I could break down why a fighter won a round and shit like that. Or you know, shit, put me on the keys to victory, John. I could break that shit down. I'm a coach. I got a stable of fighters, and they some of the top fighters in Philadelphia. I'm 26 years old. I got that. I got the experience to talk that shit. Joseph Jackson said, "Where's South Paul been? I haven't seen him here. I don't know. That nigga, that nigga somewhere." Uh, you know, air drying some socks from out his window. I don't know what he doing. I don't know what he doing because he can't leave the crib. So I don't know. I mean, he probably tanning on his roof somewhere in Chicago. I don't know. You know what I mean? Selling some iPod mini minis or some shit. I don't know what the fuck he doing. You know what I mean? You got to go ask him that. He be, he, he be I, I don't know. I don't see him, but. You know, I'm sure I'm sure he'd be active on here. Go ask him what he'd been doing. Yeah, you know I mean. But I heard a lot of people complaining about Clarissa Shields' commentary. You know what I mean? But what's important more than the commentary was the confrontation she had with Alicia Bumgarner. Now, her and Alicia Bumgarner have been beefing lately, but I thought it was kind of confusing to me, in all honesty, because uh um they was cool at one point. Like I remember when Alicia Bumgarner first got popped for the PEDs. Clarissa Shields was uh one of the people that stood up for her. You know what I mean? She was like, "Oh, I know she a clean fighter. We, we just gotta let we like pretty much was giving her the benefit of the doubt." You know what I mean? So uh, he picking lint off that twenty year old beanie. That's wild. Yo, that shit crazy. That, you know that nigga that nigga beanie probably smell like uh like uh like hand wraps. You know what I mean? You know when, when you don't wash your hand wraps for a while. That's what that nigga Beanie smell like. Bad John. Bad John. That's uh, you know how like I think that that's uh I think that Beanie is is uh more than just a hat for South Paul. You know what I mean? I think that's like his defense mechanism. Like, you know how armadillos when they feel threatened and shit, they like ball up real quick. 
they ball up real quick and shit, and you can't get past their shells, so you can't eat them or nothing like that. I think that's that. I think that beanie. I think that beanie. Whenever he see his ops and shit, you know what I mean. He just roll that bitch down. You know what I mean. I think that John bulletproof. I, I think that beanie part of South Paul head. I never seen that nigga hairline. You know what I'm saying? I think that shit is like engraved in his head. I think that if you took his beanie off, I think the top of his dome come off with it. That shit, that shit like uh you probably just gonna see his brain on some mojo jojo shit. You take that motherfucking beanie off, that shit attached to his head. I think he shower with that shit and all. You know what I mean? That's what I think. I think I think that shit is like I think that shit like uh how you say that? That shit, that shit like uh flame retardant. Uh, I think that shit, that shit waterproof, water resistant. You know what I mean? I never, bro, I seen this nigga sparring. That nigga had a head gear on with the beanie on. I was like, that's fucking wild, bro. I seen this nigga license. He had the beanie on. I was like, yo, this nigga is different, bro. Like that, I, I started to think that like this nigga hairline was just made of wool. I thought that, that, you know what I'm saying? That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's up with him. Nigga Beanie was made in the back of the Chinese spot. That's a bad John. He got that John up. He got them John at the poppy store. That should be all the way up to the ceiling. The Dominican niggas got a grad at uh they got that big ass stick with the uh with the fucking John at the end, you know, and they got the button down here. They could they could grab it, pull it down, type shit. That was one of those special Johns, you know what I mean? You know what I mean, all that shit he be talking. I bet you he still got some Azuma merch. You know what I'm saying? He be posting videos and he still be having my merch on. So you must not dislike me that much, bitch ass nigga. I mean, that's South Paul shit somewhere down Kensington chilling on the dope fiend inside a dope fiend tent. You know what I'm saying? That South Paul merch, that shit trash. You feel me? That shit super trash. Niggas be, uh, Niggas be sparking, niggas be sparking uh heron on them hoodies now. You know what I'm saying? Them prostitutes probably be laying on it uh, before they get skeeted on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That South Paul merch down somewhere. That nigga trash, bro. That nigga merch corny and shit. Nigga ain't got no swag. That nigga still wear N one short uh N one basketball shorts. That nigga that nigga shorts go down to his shins and shit. Badge on, bro. Yeah, you know I mean, this nigga had a Mark Echo track suit on, four XL. I was like, damn, that's a badge on. This nigga had a uh, <laughs> this nigga had a. Uh, and they had an Ed Hardy sparring set on. <laughs> that nigga had a, a Ed Hardy headgear, gloves, cup, all that shit. I was like, yo, this nigga really stuck in 2004 on some Cassidy shit. For real, for real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They be uh that's the thing though. Like, I heard that them niggas in Chicago, they've been having like cause it gets so cold in Chicago that they be having trouble, like, you know what I mean, getting their heating systems to work and shit like that. But they said that if they was able to do like a little small like incision in South Paul's beanie, that shit could heat up the whole city for like three years. You know what I'm saying? That that tired ass beanie, that shit hold in a lot of uh you know what I mean? That shit's so dry. You know what I mean? If they spark a flame next to it, you know, like dead leaves. You know, like if you like, you know, you put some 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 fire to some dead leaves, that shit could cause a crazy fire and shit like that. If you if they was able to just take a little piece off a of South Paul beanie and shit, and you know, strike a little strike a little match on it, you know what I mean? That shit could heat up the whole uh that shit could heat up the whole hood for three years. You know what I mean? So yeah, bro. That nigga was trying to get me to make his merch. I was like, fuck out of here, nigga. 
Fuck you talking about? I mean, chop. I don't want to do none of that. We don't work for free. Yo, he slammed that beanie to the floor. He going, um, you know how like that nuke that they dropped in, uh, I think it was like Hiroshima or some shit like that. And the nuke was so hot that it, like it burnt the boy's shadow into the wall. I think that, I think that if beanie, if he slammed that beanie, I hope that he do it when his family not in there. You know what I'm saying? Cause I think that South Paul would melt Hiroshima. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that South Paul would melt. You know what I mean? That's what I think. That he got he got to chill. He got to be more considerate of the people around him. You know what I mean? I think that shit. Uh, I think that'd be a bad job. But uh, yeah, we losing viewers and shit because we talking about this clown. <laughs> nah, for real though. Uh, yeah, bro. Yeah, we ain't gonna talk about it no more. I hope they screen record that and send it to me too. Cause I'm waiting for him to call my phone. Turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they wear those. They watch my page and they be telling him what's up. Now he be having a lot to say about me. You know what I mean? From what last time I checked, you got like 60, 70,000 subscribers. I ain't even got 2K yet. Why are you so worried about me? You know what I mean? So we gave him a little bit of attention today, but we're going to get back to the boxing talk. You know what I mean? What I really do. You know what I mean? I ain't got to sell no controversy. You know what I mean? I could just talk boxing and they rock with me. You know what I mean? They donate to the channel. They rock with the channel. Views consistent. You know what I mean? I ain't doing the views you doing, but I'm holding my own. You feel what I mean? I ain't got to collab with nobody. Every time I go live, I be dolo and the people rock with me. And that's just what it is. You feel what I'm saying? I got the best support system in the in, on YouTube, man. Hands down. Shout out to the nation. I, I shout out the nation every time. I shout out the nation every time. Name one video that I put up that I don't shout out the nation. Come on, man. South Paul don't even rock with y'all. He be taking y'all money and still be disrespecting y'all. Y'all be like, oh man, South Paul, that's a funny guy. No, he's a fucking schizophrenic, bro. He's a fucking schizophrenic, clearly. You feel me? But, uh, <laughs> yeah, let, let's get into Clarissa Shields and Alicia Bumgarner, you know what I'm saying? And then I want to talk about David Benavidez for, for the hell of it, because I think that shit was funny. But uh, let's talk about... Let's talk about Alicia Bumgarner and Clarissa Shields. So Clarissa Shields was at the event. He, she was commentating or whatever. A lot of people had a, neg a lot of negative criticism about that. But regardless, I'm sure she was compensated to do so. So she went over there and went about her business. In the course of her commentating or whatever, I guess, after the fight was over, she had ran into Alicia Bumgarner, who I guess was just sitting there spectating because it was a DAZN car. And, you know, she's a, a matron fighter as of right now. You know what I mean? So, you know, they've been beefing for a while. Um, as far back as I can remember, I always thought that they was cool. Clarissa Shields and Alicia Bumgarner had a good relationship. Uh, but I don't know. You know, when the PED allegations came out, I remember Clarissa Shields defending her. So they were friends at that time, which is which wasn't that long ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, I don't know. Something happened where, like, you know, Alicia Bumgarner was feeling herself or something like that. And she called out Clarissa Shields. And I remember Clarissa Shields genuinely being confused. Like, what is she calling me out? Like, I thought we was friends. Like, what the fuck? But like, you know, she was like, oh, it's business type shit. So Alicia Bumgarner made a dumbass decision to call out Clarissa the T-Rex Shields. You know what I mean? So she literally was looking for the problems. And, you know, Clarissa Shields, she the type that she don't really let shit go. You know what I mean? She definitely... uh she definitely be about the action. You know what I mean? She don't really be running from shit. She don't bite her tongue for nobody. She be with the shits, bro. 
So uh, I kind of knew that it was going to go downhill from there if they were to ever see each other. And I seen that like, they saw each other on a plane, but Clarissa kept it pretty reserved because I think she was understanding that the smallest altercations that happen on airplanes can result in, you know, the flight being stopped or them being kicked out. So she probably just kept it cool for that reason alone. She probably had shit to attend to. You know what I mean? But, you know, when they were talking back and forth, you know, Alicia Bumgarner was talking about, she was talking about how she wanted Clarissa to come down to 47. And I'm looking at Clarissa Shields' body, and um, she's she she thick. You know what I'm saying? She She's a heavy girl. And she, she even admitted that she was 175 pounds. All that legs and ass that she got, I knew there was no way that she would make 147 pounds. So um, I don't even understand why Alicia Bumgarner was asking asking like requesting that as if she's the a side you know what i mean i do remember clarissa shields bringing up the fact that she could go down to 47 but you know things change you know clarissa shields talked about how she got as heavy as 190 pounds she was going through depression and all that so you mean to tell me that she gonna go from 190 to 147 to fight you when she's the a side that don't really make sense at all because clarissa shields is obviously the more accomplished fighter i think she's further along in her career and from how the way that interaction went, it seemed like Clarissa Shields get compensated uh, significantly more than uh, Alicia Bumgarner, which lets me know that Clarissa Shields is in more demand than Alicia Bumgarner at this point. You know what I'm saying? So um, but then I, I don't really understand why she was requesting it so much. But Clarissa Shields, you know, in her right, she said that we can make it happen at 154. You know, when you the A side, like Clarissa Shields, and I'm only bringing up the A side shit because, you know, uh, Alicia Bumgarner is attempting to flex on her as if she the one who run the show. You know what I mean? It just didn't really make sense to me. And, you know, realistically speaking, you know, Clarissa Shields ain't getting down to one, no 147. You know, I know for a fact that no, all that, yeah, she got bro, don't, let's not act, I'm not going to sit here and act like Clarissa ain't got no like ass or, you know, legs. She, 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 she a big girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, she big. She, she definitely hold weight. Is what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to be like perverted or nothing like that. That's just the reality. You know what I mean? So then they got to talking about, you know, who looks better and all this irrelevant shit. You know what I mean? It just seemed like Alicia Bumgarner was just trying to make it clear that she that uh Clarissa Shields wants to be her and that she's insecure. And I've seen that little interaction where um Alicia Bumgarner pretty much turned her back to Clarissa Shields and was talking to the people. Now, that kind of confused me because that's a conversation that's between you and another individual. So why are you looking at other people as if you're trying to get some type of validation or you're just trying to get the cameras involved? Like what you're doing is, is, is just something to just hype up a possible fight or, you know, some type of uh, antics that you're doing to get some attention online. It was like she was either looking at a phone or she was just talking to the people that were behind her. Either way, you needed to worry about the woman that was in front of you because that's who you were having uh the problem with you know what i mean that's who you were having the the argument with you know and i see that clarissa shields like smacked her hand down twice and alicia bumgarner did not respond at all so you could tell that clarissa shields is you know she she definitely like the big dog in that situation you feel what i mean alicia bumgarner you know got a little bit too comfortable she probably didn't think uh clarissa shields was gonna react and she did you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, that's pretty much the whole thing that transpired from that situation. And I seen Clarissa Shields had went on live and was just pretty much flexing on her. Like, yo, I get more money than you, blah, blah, blah. Why would I want to be you? I'm, I'm happy in myself. I'm happy in my own skin. Type shit. So she was just, you could tell she just went on a crazy like half hour rant just going in on Alicia. You know what I mean? Saying she not from Detroit. She from Ohio, which I've been hearing before. There might be some validation of that. But regardless... Um, that was pretty much the situation that transpired between the both of them. Now, what I personally think about that fight happening is not going to happen. Um, for one, Eddie Hearn ain't going to cash out Alicia Bumgarner for no fucking Clarissa Shields. We know that for a fact. They're already having disputes in which weight they should fight at, and they haven't even gotten to um, the first step in business, which is a fucking offer. You know what I mean? So that fight's not happening at all. Um, Bumgarner may very well be using Clarissa Shields as a promotional tool. That's something that's very possible as well. You know what I mean? She probably knows that Clarissa can't get down to 147. So what is she doing? You know, telling her to come down to 47, even though we all know that she's not getting down there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what else could it be? 
like Eddie Hearn is not gonna cash Alicia out for Clarissa Shield. That's not gonna happen. She she uh he could easily make fights happen with Katie Taylor, you know, Amanda Serrano, uh Cameron, even that new girl that's on the mix, uh Sandy Ryan. And these were all suggestions by Clarissa Shields herself. So that let me know that, you know, she understands the business and what would be more realistic. Clarissa Shields is making it clear that this fight's not really realistic unless, you know, Alicia Bumgarner would have come up to 54. But Clar Alicia is too small. You know what I mean? Um, it, it just, bro, Clarissa Shields will beat. The dog shit out of Alicia Bumgarner, bro. Like, badly. Like, I've seen her, the girl that she just avenged her loss to, I've seen her get outclassed by that girl. I've seen Michaela May her, Michaela May her give her everything she was looking for. And these are smaller individuals. You know, Clarissa Shields isn't a big puncher, but who's to say that Alicia Bumgarner could, you know, absorb them type of shots from a bigger woman? Like, Clarissa Shields is usually fighting women that are about her size. You know what I'm saying? Usually about her size. If she would have fight somebody like Alicia Bumgarner, who walks around, she said, Clarissa Shields says that Alicia walks around her fight weight. You know what I mean? And I'm assuming she fight at 130 still. So you're telling me she walking between 130 and 135? Man, stop it, bro. Clarissa will step on her and probably stop her. Alicia got power. She ain't got enough power to keep that big ass woman up off her. I know that. I've seen her hit Michaela Mayer clean and other girls like that. And she ain't going nowhere, bro. You think Clarissa about to go somewhere? First of all, you probably not even going to hit her with that shit that you be throwing. You know what I mean? That lead right hand and all that shit. And lately, you've been taking like a slick outboxing approach. That's not going to work with uh, Clarissa Shields either. You know what I mean? She comp she way more polished than you, way more experienced. Better skills, better hand speed. You know what I mean? She's the more intelligent fighter, in my opinion. So you asked out all around the board, and the size advantage is the biggest thing for real, for real. You know what I mean? So that, that fight definitely not happening, man. They just going back and forth. And, you know, it's good for boxing. It's good for their uh, marketability and shit like that. We talking about it. So obviously um, it's working. But uh, come on, man. At least you're not taking that chance. Clarissa ain't going back. She not going down to 147. Just chalking. She said she went vegan for like what was it, two years? But she still wasn't walking around. She still wasn't walking around that fight weight. So I let you know everything you need to know. She said Clarissa is the greatest female fighter of the modern era. I think that Amanda Serrano has a case in all honesty, but yeah, Clarissa Shields, I'll give it to her. But I think Amanda Serrano uh, losing to Katie Taylor, I think if she would have beat Katie Taylor, she would have had an even more stronger case. But I heard they're going to rematch sometime this summer, so let's see, man. Let's see. But uh, yeah, I think the seven divisions that Amanda Serrano got, I think that's something that really needs to be spoken about. Um, she became undisputed as well. Uh, I think she's the first woman to make a million dollar payday. Um, what else? She was the first to do 12 three minute rounds for females. Bro, she 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 doing some legendary shit. Amanda is doing some legendary shit, bro. You know what I mean? She paving the way for a lot of women. I think that two minute round shit eventually gonna be a thing of the past. And I think we're gonna have to thank Amanda Serrano for that. DOG215 says Bum Garner stamina is not good. That's another great observation. That's another great observation. You know what I mean? That's something that I noticed as well. Yeah, Mizuma TV clips. I was telling you about it. I I mean, I was telling the people about it earlier. I seen a clip of Javante. You know, he took, he, like, he, I guess he had like finished the training session, took his shirt off, and he was absolutely shredded, bro. <laughs> like, that's the most I've ever seen, like, his ass be that defined. Like, um, you could tell that he look, he looks like he's on fight weight right now, in all honesty, bro. So, like I said, I hope he's not overtraining. Hopefully, he's taking things slow because he has a lot of time um, until the fight. You know, it's currently April 8th right now, it's 12 in the morning in Philly, about to be one in the morning. 
So he literally has all of May. He has the rest of April, all of May, and then the good part of June. Because as far as I'm concerned, they fight in April, um, June 22nd, June 22nd. So, um, yeah. So you can tell he really locked in on Frank Martin. He about he ain't about to play with Frank Martin, and you can tell he got a healthy amount of respect for Frank Martin because of how well he's um, been prepared for this situation. You know what I mean? So I think Tank on a mission, bro. I never seen Tank this focused like these last series of fights because you know he would typically blow up and wait and shit like that when he was fucking with AB. But uh, you know what I mean? He, ever since like he really stood away from AB and stuff like that, and just focused on himself. You know, he been, I never really seen him blow up and wait since then. You know. It's like he took a page out of Floyd's book and just learned how to just stay disciplined. You know what I mean? And just leave the liquor and shit alone. He mad at the doubters. That's a fact. I mean, he should. That's that that that's gonna motivate him. He was mad at the doubters when he fought Pedraza. Look 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 how it turned out. Is Frank Martin the most dangerous American tank will fight? I mean, that's I mean. We don't know yet, you know what I mean? Um, in all honesty, there's some other great American fighters out there, Devin Haney, Shakur Stevenson. Shakur Stevenson being in his weight class right now because a lot of people making cases that, you know, Javante isn't a 140, so he's not going to fight Dev, blah, blah, blah. But Shakur Stevenson is a great American that you can fight at 135. Um, and he said that he's going to fight both of them before his career is up, so... I mean, we we just gonna have to wait and see. We can't answer that question until Javante's career is complete. You know what I mean? We just gonna have to see, bro. I don't know. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. That's some shit that time will tell, bro. So when Tank retire, we can come back to that question, my brother. I ain't going to count him out just yet. I've been frustrated with him. I've been frustrated with Tank. You said he ain't had no cuts in the two Garcia fights. Uh, if you talking, What you talking about, abs? Because if that's what you're talking about, then, yeah, I, I recall that. Like, I don't know if it's his tattoos that cover up his abs. You know what I mean? But uh, – you know, when he would get on the scale, you can't really see any definition in his stomach. You see, like, a little bit, but for the most part, it didn't really look like he worked on the abs too much. He said, you're gas, bro. Get some rest. Yeah, in a little bit. You know what I mean? I just want to – I still got some energy, though. I've been way more tired in previous lives. You know what I mean? But let, let's uh, – let me watch this real quick about y'all boy David Benavidez, man. You know what I mean? I hope this ain't – this like I said, this is one of my favorite fighters, but I got to laugh at this. I got to laugh at this. You know what I'm saying? Looked like David Benavidez had a hell of a night. You know what I mean? Looked like he had a hell of a night <laughs> on Saturday. Uh, G.A. May Zay, um, you said just tapped in. Who won are you, Hitchens and Lamos? I thought it was 7-5 either way. I thought it was that close. You know what I mean? A lot of people thought Lamos won. I don't know. I thought they had a 7 5 either way, though. It was close. But uh, shout out to my boy, David Benavidez, man. That boy was lit on Saturday night, man. I don't know what he was on. You know what I mean? I hope he wasn't back on that Yayo. You know what I'm saying? That that, that Yayo, because, you know, he got a history of doing that. You know, he apologized, said he wasn't going to do that again. He was partying with the wrong people. But it looked like he had a hell of a night Saturday night, man. I want to know what he was sipping on. You know what I'm saying? I guess he got some time until his fight against Alexander Vosdick and stuff like that. So, you know, he's trying to have a couple weekends to enjoy himself. But I heard he just moved to Miami. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Miami is not the best place to be if you have some type of, you know, rec you know, recreational habits. You know what I mean? But, you know, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. But uh, I don't know if Benavidez is on the ping ping. I don't know. But uh, he definitely was off the liquor, though, for sure, for sure. He, I don't know if he mixed that in there, but I, I seen him take a picture with De La Hoya. 
like yesterday or the day before. I hope this ain't a coincidence, dog. I hope I hope he wasn't chilling with Oscar on that level. But uh, let's get into this video right here. I guess the, so the zone had interviewed him. The zone interviewed him. That was just asking him questions about Diego Pacheco, who's his stable mate. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm dead serious, bro. I'm not joking. He took a picture with De La Hoya, uh, I think yesterday. You know what I mean? So that ain't no joke. I ain't shitting on the boy. I fuck with Benavidez heavy. But look, this was literally one day ago. You chilling with Oscar De La Hoya, bro. You know what I mean? Then you come, <laughs> you come to the fights and you acting like this. Look, yo, he was sipping water. So, you know, he was trying to get his senses back. You know what I mean? I hope, I hope, I hope Oscar ain't slipping him none of that bing bing, man. I don't fuck with that. But, you know what I mean, let's see. So uh, uh, sipping that water. <laughs> Job. What more do you want to see from him in the second half of the fight? I want to see him just his more and uh, his power. He's, he's looking like he's in power, so I'm really not fully using right now. That boy all sudden strong. That nigga sound like Nate Diaz. The power, the shit all dragged out. God damn. That boy was fucked up. Hey, yo, first of all, first of all, no Diddy. You get, yo, I swear, bro, these Caucasian motherfuckers, bro, they don't be like knowing when to like, they don't be knowing how to re revise certain words and shit like that. You don't think that's just alcohol, Lorenzo? Well, that's not good, then, man. And he do year-round vodka testing. I hope you don't get caught up with that bing bing again. Yeah, listen to White Bull. Ah, oh, shit. Hold up. Hold on. Power. What? <laughs> Benavidez out here wowing. Oh my god, I hope he not bro, because it's always like when he's in a good position, he finds a way to fuck up. You know what I'm saying? When he got that, when he got that. He got that WBC world title the first time. He got caught with that yayo, with that ooh wee, that bing bing, right? Then uh, he ends up getting the title back, you know what I mean, during the COVID stuff. And, you know, he loses his title on the scale. So it's always when he either got an opportunity in the works or, like, once he, you know, gets content or whatever, it seems like he finds a way to fuck up this situation. So I don't know, man. Hopefully that's just him just having a night out, just drinking or whatever. Yeah, you know I mean, he apologized, said that that'll never happen again, type shit. So I'm assuming that um, he's just gonna be drinking on his own time. He ain't gonna bring it over to the boxing events. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he off that yeah yo. I hope he ain't off that yeah yo. You chilling with Oscar? You know what I mean? Oscar, you know he keep that on him by the suitcase. You know what I mean? So all Oscar do, you know what I mean? He can fill up a little little uh, tube or whatever and send you about your way. You know what I mean? Oscar get the Oscar get that ping ping by the boat load. You feel me? So and we can't forget who Oscar get that ping ping from. You know what I'm saying? Let me see. This is exactly who Oscar get the, that ping ping from. That yeah yo, that ooh wee. You know what I mean? That's who that's I who I like should get it from. Instagram, my page, and I find Oscar that I always post cherries on the champ of the world, Danny Garcia. But this is what I got for Oscar. I got fish scale. Hit me up on the low, Oscar on the <laughs> feet. Thank you. <laughs> my boy, my boy Oscar get it. He get that fish scale from Angel. Oh yeah. Y'all in Wallen. Off that yeah yo. Oh man, bad John. Shout out to the boy Angel Garcia, man. Shout out to him. Keeping him in tune with that bing bing, you feel me? But uh all right, y'all. 
<laughs> I'm gonna get up out of here, man. It was a great, funny live. You know what I mean? I appreciate everybody that was tuned in. This was a pretty high viewed uh, live today. You know what I mean? It's one of the highest ones that I've done in a while. So I'm very appreciative for everybody that done came on. Yeah, Angel said that stepped on. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> but anyway, I, I don't know if he's selling it though. I don't know if Angel's selling it. I think he's doing, I don't know. I think he's keeping it to himself. But that's between you and me. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody that's in the building, man. Shout out to the nation and the mob. I'm going to go get me some rest, of course. You know what I mean? Y'all hit the like. Y'all hit the subscribe button if y'all new to the channel. You know what I mean? We on the road to 2K. We're going to hit that 1900 mark in due time. So until then, y'all have a blessed, beautiful night. I'll be on live tomorrow as well with a couple videos that I'll be posting. You know what I mean? If this video is uploaded by now, I'm going to post it. Uh, let me see if I got that video ready to go yet. Oh, no, that video still uploading. Ain't that some shit? All right, I'm going to try to re-upload this, John. You know what I mean? But until then, y'all have a blessed, beautiful night. Hit the like button on your way out. Subscribe if you knew, like Lorenzo said. You know what I mean? I'm out of here. Peace.